What's up guys? We're back with another episode of Great Moments in Fighting Game History. Thank you for being patient. I know it's been a while since the last episode of this, but we have a banger of a match today. We're taking a look at Justin Wong versus Daigo Umehara, Evo Grand Finals 2009. In my opinion, and I'm hoping to persuade you to this as well, this is the greatest Evo Finals of all time. But before we get to the match, first we're going to cover some of the background as usual, talk about the two players, talk about the characters they're going to be playing, and what the expectations were leading up to this classic match. Daigo Umehara, Daigo Umehara is a player who really needs no introduction. Uh, at this point in time in 2009, he already had four EVO first place finishes. He was considered the best player in Japan at Street Fighter at the time, perhaps even the best in the world. In addition to all his other accomplishments, he was also responsible for a little moment that some of you might be familiar with. And of course, you may notice that the person on the receiving end of that legendary Evo Moment 37 parry was Justin Wong himself. Justin, known primarily as a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 player, generally considered the greatest American fighting game player of all time. He won Evo in 2001, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8 in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, a feat that remains unmatched by any other player in any other fighting game. I wanted to win just like a different game for Evo because like most of my wins for Evo are just Marvel 2, right? So because of that, I wanted to diversify and say that to tell people that, oh, I can win other games besides like Marvel 2. However, at this point, the Street Fighter series was largely dominated in tournament by Japanese players. The predecessor to Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, was run at EVO six years, and all six of those years, a Japanese player took first place, and oftentimes the majority of the top eight was made up of Japanese players. You know, I really wanted America to win Street Fighter 4, right? Or just Street Fighter in general. It's tough, so it's just like a, it's a race, pretty much, right? To see, like, which American can, can actually win EVO against, like, Japanese in, in the Street Fighter game. One of the reasons for this Japanese dominance is the prevalence of arcade culture. So Street Fighter 4 was released over six months earlier in arcade than it was on console. And though while a few arcade machines made their way to America, in Japan the arcade scene is much more popular and much more centralized, allowing top players to learn the new game together and practice with each other much more effectively. Japan getting an arcade release is always a huge advantage over uh, for Japan and America. Because one... All the best players live in Tokyo. Literally, like, a lot, like, Daigo, Tokido, Momochi, Kazuno, like, they all live in Tokyo. So, like, it's literally a train ride to, like, a thousand arcades. Think about that, right? While in America, it's so vast, and arcades is just, you know, if you think about this, is there's New York, there's Texas, there's California. That's, like, I would say that the major three. And then all these other states, all these other players, they're all, you know, it's, like, separated. And they have to really wait for a console release, right? Leading up to EVO 2009, Justin and Daigo played in the GameStop National Championships tournament. And this was the moment where Justin really realized that Daigo's legendary reactions and defense would prove to be a major problem for Justin's rushdown-oriented character, Rufus. At the tournament, he actually washed me, like, hard. Like, he destroyed me so bad, I was like, bro, I actually don't know how to play this game at all. Yeah, he destroyed my Rufus. Every time I did a dive, he, that's, I just saw, sure you can. Like, I was like, damn, he can react to that? It's like low dive kicks, and he's just reacting like he's still like 22 or 21. So then I just thought, like, okay, I need to get better. Um, I need to find answers. And when Evil 2009 came around, I thought, like, this is a chance where I can actually, like, a chance for revenge. And that brings us back to where we started here. Evo 2009, Justin versus Daigo. So in top eight earlier, Daigo already knocked Justin into the loser's bracket. This is a double elimination tournament. And so Justin is going to have to come back and win two sets straight to win. And Daigo only has to win one set. And so for Justin, the character choice here is going to be really big. He already saw that Rufus was not really working. Daigo had too many good anti-airs with Dragon Punch. 
He's going to have to look for another character that could maybe find an easier way in. Catch Daigo off guard. And so he ends up going with Abel, who is a pretty mobile grappler character. Uh, and the idea here is that he can roll through the fireballs maybe, get in, and start mixing Daigo up with stuff like Abel's command throw, which is not reactable. So maybe he can catch Daigo off guard here. But Daigo's control of the neutral game here is really insane. He's able to keep Justin at arm's length, not let him get in, keeping him away with those normals like his crouching medium kick and his fireball as well. And Justin really has trouble dealing with this as Abel. And really without too much trouble here, Daigo is able to take game one, defeating Justin's Abel. And so Justin is going to have to find maybe a different character that could work a little bit better. Rufus with the dive kicks didn't work. Abel with the crazy mix-ups with the command throw didn't work. He couldn't get in. So what happens here, this is where this really starts to get good. He thinks about Rufus. He moves around the character screen a little bit. He's just trying to find the answer here. And he ends up going with Balrog. So this to me is one of the greatest decisions in fighting game history. He's basically deciding here. I'm going to hit pause. He's basically deciding here. You know, he, he went for the craziness. He went for the all out rushdown with Rufus. It didn't work. He went for the throw mix ups, the unpredictability of Abel. It didn't work. So now he's going to Balrog here. And he is going to completely change up his playstyle, going from all-out offense into a more defensive, ground game-oriented style. And l let me just say, Balrog does not have an unreactable overhead. Balrog does not have a command throw. He doesn't even have a cross-up. He really has very few ways to mix the opponent up and keep them guessing. But what he does have is really good walk speed and really good normals. What we're seeing here on screen right now is his sweep, probably his best move. He's just generally got amazing footsies. And if you're unfamiliar with the concept of footsies, it's basically a catch-all term for the ground game in fighting games, where you're both walking around, you're trying to get out of your opponent's optimal range and keep them in your optimal range, where you can punish them for sticking out a button at a bad time. And so Justin is going to try to apply this footsie strategy and completely change the way he plays, and we'll see how that works on Daigo here. So you can already see right off the bat, he's playing very defensive. He's making great use of these great normal attacks that Balrog has. He's keeping Daigo at bay. And manages to take a round for the first time in Grand Finals. Balrog is taking a round, getting the audience excited. Now watch this series here, okay? So he jumps over the fireball. Really good stuff. And then... Oh, just that little bit of a walk back. He baits out a normal from Daigo and punishes with the super. And he's still applying those normals at just the perfect range. Justin's control of the ground game here is really, really exceptional. And then closes it out, trading with the fireball. So what I think is so amazing here. So Daigo here, he's got the game knowledge experience, being that the Japanese fighting game players had such a head start in this game he's got the matchup knowledge experience but instead of trying to surprise him and you know pull a rabbit out of the hat what does justin do he just goes pure solid footsies gameplay no gimmicks he just relies a hundred percent on his fundamentals and he completely changes from being all out aggressive to being all out defensive, letting Daigo come to him and controlling the game that way. I just think this is such an incredible adaptation. And now we finally have a real match. All right, and here we go into the next game here. So there's a few things I'm gonna point out. So right off the bat, uh, we've seen that Justin is so good at applying his pokes, at standing at the perfect range where he's gonna make Daigo whiff with his crouching medium kick. So Daigo's adapting by moving to poking with Fireball. Fireball, a very excellent poke, but it has that big downside where if you jump over it, you get a full combo. So Justin looking for it, he guesses right on the Fireball. Amazing punish. That time he guessed wrong and he got anti-aired, but I mean, that's just going to happen when you're fighting a Fireball character. You have to accept that you're going to get anti-aired, but if you actually land the jump in, you're going to gain a lot more damage than you lost. And there was a nice air-to-air -air as well from Justin there. And a nice anti-air on Daigo, but Daigo lands the focus attack. So this is a big tool in this matchup. Focus attack can eat a poke and then punch back and get a crumple into a full combo. So that's what Daigo gets here, but he drops the combo. 
And Justin punishes with exactly what he needs. A combo into Balrog's Ultra. And gets another round on the board, guys. Justin is on quite a roll here. A Daigo is actually a bit on the back foot and going to need to adjust. So let's see what he does. That's a very nice poke with the crouching medium kick. Fireball stays blocked there. What a whiff punish. He just lands so many of these in this set. That requires such an insane level of reactions and knowledge of spacing. Really, Justin putting on a clinic and proving how good he is with these footsies. But we saw again, once again, Justin guesses a jump here, expecting a fireball, gets anti-aired. Sometimes you just got to take those. And another incredible whiff punish. How does he do it, man? Using uh, standing roundhouse from long range, perfectly applied spacing. There was, it wasn't exactly a whiff punish, but you'll see a lot of players' first instinct when they whiff a normal is to block. That's the natural reaction. So if you don't react with the whiff punish in time, walking up and going for a throw is very effective. But Daigo is such a good player. He was ready on the throw break and he got out of there. Another guest jump works out for Justin. He gets in. Uses Balrog's Ultra to push to the corner. And now, like I said, Balrog doesn't have amazing mix-ups, but he blocks the DP FADC. Okay, so we have to talk a little bit about DP FADC. So FADC stands for Focus Attack Dash Cancel. And you'll see Daigo does a Dragon Punch here. And he cashes in two meters to cancel it into a Focus Attack. And then he dashes out of the focus attack. This is one of Ryu's most powerful tools. One of the reason why Ryu was considered top tier in the first version of Street Fighter 4 is because DPF ADC is very powerful because it's invincible and it's safe. And if it hits, you can connect Ryu's ultra. So we're going to see more of that later in the match. But what happens here is Justin reacted to the DPF ADC and he started throwing out jab. Balrog's jab is three frames, tying it for fastest move in the game. And whatever Daigo was trying to go for after his FADC, Justin Wong counter hit him out of it. And he goes into super here. Doesn't quite kill, but Daigo's on a pixel. And so once again, this is a dangerous situation for Justin. Daigo has two meters and ultra available which means that he can land DP FADC Ultra, which would kill Justin in this situation. So that is something that Justin has to be cognizant of. But here comes Justin perfectly spacing out his pokes. That standing roundhouse, whiffing it, but not getting punished. Daigo is too scared to press any buttons here. He's been whiff punished so many times for sticking out buttons. So Justin can kind of press buttons at will here, and he does exactly that. Counter hits Daigo, probably out of fireball startup or something like that. So Justin wins game three. The score is now two to one. Justin one game away from resetting grand finals and playing another set. But Daigo's adaptation and his fortitude in the face of this situation is really impressive. Nice anti-air dragon punch. Again, Justin guessing wrong on a fireball. Lands the throw, but the second throw gets teched. Really great spacing on the sweeps. Oh, but here we can see Daigo utilizing the focus attack. Let's him absorb that sweep and punish Justin. It's definitely a recurring theme in here. Balrog does have moves that break focus, but they're kind of slow. So you'll see Justin is a little bit hesitant to use those early on. And Daigo can get away with charging up the focus attack. But here... Justin fights out with that three-frame jab, but he didn't have enough charge stored to do a headbutt. Now, perfectly spaced standing roundhouses. There's another one. Perfectly spaced sweeps. Another whiff punish sweep. A whiff punish stand roundhouse. But Daigo lands EX fireball. Focus attack dash cancel. Spends three bars of meter and ultra to get himself back in this game. Justin trying not to get chipped. And he gets hit by a fireball. Really amazing comeback from Daigo there. We're seeing... This is one of the things that makes Daigo one of the most entertaining fighting game players to watch. He'll always pull out something that you've never seen before. He's always able to claw back from the edge of defeat. But Justin Wong as well, he's so solid. He does not get flustered. But that's a very nice overhead. Opens up Balrog for blocking low. Now Justin sitting on ultra and a full super meter. Lands another big sweep and then a meaty throw. Catches Daigo, likely doing a focus attack. Anti-air, Crouch Fierce working really well on Daigo here. 
more of those very well spaced sweeps. But he is going to have to be careful of that focus attack. That is the major downside of going for all these long range sweeps with Balrog. Daigo utilizing Fireball as a poke effectively, but Justin called it. He knew it was coming, jumped right over it. And he stands up and starts hyping up the crowd mid-match. Then realizes quickly that he's got to get back and continue playing. Because this could reset the bracket if Justin takes this round. Both players with full super. Both characters having very strong supers, but Ryu's super especially is really good. But usually Ryu players are going to use their meter for FADC instead, just because it lets you combo into Ultra and be safe. Look at that though, the wake up low forward into Fireball, into Super, just as I say that. Getting Daigo a good chunk of damage right off the bat. Balrog walking him down to the corner, but he jumps in and gets anti-aired. Good reactions on the anti-air DP from Daigo. And then he jumps in and gets a full combo of his own. And then the headbutt is blocked. Good punish by Daigo. And then just goes for the EX uppercut to chip Justin out. The score is now 2-2. Two to two, As everybody is indicating. So Justin needs to win this. To keep the set alive. Go into the next set and reset the bracket. But if Daigo wins, it's over, and he wins the tournament. And that is a major start there. He gets a one-frame link off that forward fierce. Huge damage. But Justin really good with these pokes. Daigo poking with low forward into Fireball, a very effective Shoto tool. The Shotokan characters, Ryu, Ken, Akuma, all equipped with very good Fireballs. And low medium kick into Fireball is a good string for helping push the opponent into the corner. And then Justin fights back with the three-frame jab again. He's finding these gaps in Daigo's pressure very effectively. He's anti-airing him with Crouch Fierce. You can see the fear when Daigo starts charging that focus attack. Justin doesn't really have an answer yet. He kind of just has to get out of the way. Be careful not to stick out any buttons. There's a nice sweep from Daigo. DP FADC. Justin tries to interrupt with the three-frame jab, but Daigo blocks it. Nice block on the cross-up and a jump back Fierce. To air to air Daigo, one more round and Justin can reset this finals. And he's sitting on a full super here, but Daigo does have two meters, which means that FADC is going to be available for him. A huge whiff punish sweep, incredible reactions. Low forward into EX Fireball actually knocks down, which helps Daigo push himself out of the corner. A slightly mistimed whiff punish from Justin there, and there's another one. Daigo getting away with a few whiffed uh, crouching medium kicks. But he is pushed into the corner, which can be dangerous. Oh, another low forward from Daigo. Nice anti-air from Justin. But Daigo jumps out of the corner with the Tatsu. Justin jumps over the fireball a little late. Doesn't get the punish there. Daigo with the jump back anti-air this time. But he is knocked down in the corner. Full super to work with. He really has to win this round. He's jumping out, using the whole screen space to get away from Balrog. And there, closed it out with a fireball. It's two to two, each with one round on the board. Just for maximum dramatic tension. Both players with full super meter as well. Daigo throwing a lot of fireballs. Justin a little scared to jump. He's been anti-aired a lot of times for that. Ooh, interrupts the rush punch with a jab, but a second rush punch connects. Low forward into Fireball again, but this time he was a little out of range. But he does get the focus attack charge. But he drops another combo. Two drops in a row from Daigo. Very uncharacteristic. You can tell that even for a player with his level of experience and his level of execution, there is so much pressure right now. And he's dropping these things, but he gets a nice link into the EX Fireball. A nice overhead. Justin on just a little bit of life here. Trying to avoid taking too much chip. But he catches a jump back with a rush punch, and then he gets a throw. Now what's the mix? He just goes for a meaty turn punch, and it hits Daigo. Justin on his feet, the entire crowd on their feet. They're so excited. He hasn't even won the match yet. He simply reset the bracket. But everyone cannot believe what they're seeing, including Daigo, who is just, uh, you know, sitting there saying, hey, when are we going to continue this? Come on. We still have more matches to play, because now the score is 0-0. And the first one to three wins the whole tournament. So now with very little hesitation and very little chance to cool off after that intense set, they're now moving into a new set. And the first to three is going to win this. Justin continuing this poking strategy with his crouching roundhouse sweep. 
Daigo using fireballs very well, but he jumps in, gets anti-aired with a crouch fierce. Okay, a nicely spaced. Oh man, confirming off that with FADC on the fireball allows him to get a knockdown off of his crouching medium kick, and Daigo takes round one here. Justin with three meters, Daigo with just two. He will have FADC stocked. You can see him charging these focus attacks, trying to catch a sweep from Justin. Justin using focus attack to absorb fireballs, which helps you build a little bit of ultra. And now both players with full super again. A common situation. Neither of them really throwing out EX moves or anything like that to use up their meter. Nice combo into super from Justin. And the nice thing about Balrog, both his super and his ultra push the opponent into the corner, which is exactly where you want them in fighting games. But Daigo lands DP FADC ultra, gets himself out of the corner and gets the life lead back, dashing all the way across the screen and Justin whiffs a headbutt. And Daigo quickly takes game one of the second set here. Justin maybe needing to look for an adaptation a little bit. You can kind of feel Daigo getting a little more aggressive, dashing out of the across the screen here. Focus absorbing, more fireballs, building ultra, nice anti-air from Justin. He's ready with those consistently. Interrupting fireball startup with Rush Punch, also very strong since Daigo is going for a lot more fireballs as a poke. He's gotten a few key anti-airs on Justin, but he misses that one very importantly. He's going to have to fight his way out of the corner a little bit here as he gets pushed in. And then Justin uses an EX meter to absorb a fireball. But he misses with a stand roundhouse. Daigo jumps over it. Justin, not enough charge for a headbutt there. But another anti-air. We can really see Daigo, since he knows that Balrog has much better normals, Balrog can kind of control the ground space. Daigo is choosing to jump a little bit more to try to get around the pokes. But Justin is so patient and ready. He tries to anti-air a neutral jump there with the super, but unfortunately he was just a little bit too slow. That does work, it's just very difficult timing from that far away. Justin continuing to block all these fireballs, but he's already built an ultra, which he's going to use here to push Daigo into the corner. Like I mentioned, this corner carry is really important for this matchup. It helps Balrog a lot, and now he can whiff special moves to build up the last little bit of super meter that he needs here. Unfortunately, Daigo a little out of range. He whisked the DP there on the cancel. Justin just jumping back to avoid the throw. Daigo with a nice DP FADC Ultra. The classic Ryu tech that made him so strong in this game. Nice block on the overhead. So like I said, Balrog, he does have overheads, but they're all reactable. And Daigo showing that his reactions are on point here. And he's just jumping back. He's got the full screen space to work with. But Justin actually catches him out of a focus dash. Justin takes the game. It's one to one. Nice anti-air from Justin once again. Oh, look at the footsies. Can we just look at that again? I really am just blown away. Watch the way that Justin uses the footwork to dance around. And he perfectly baits out that crouching medium kick from the absolute max range. And he's ready with the punish. Incredible reactions. Incredible spacing. This is one of the reasons why I love watching Street Fighter. Is just seeing how brilliant these players are with their ground game and with the footwork. And then he goes and interrupts another fireball with a rush punch. Focus absorbs, which builds in the last little bit he needed for ultra. But Daigo getting a lot of mileage out of these fireballs here. That is the advantage of a fireball. You can't whiff punish a fireball. It's not possible. You have to jump over it. And jumping is a big risk in Street Fighter since you can't block in the air. And there's a big DP FADC Ultra. So if you're unclear why Justin got hit there. So it might seem small, but in terms of fighting games, if you watch the distance that Daigo walks to land a throw here, right there. It's it's like he walked a mile. In terms of fighting games, it's as if he walked a mile. It's so hard when you're that close to the opponent. You're within range of all their normals. It's so hard to condition them to not press any buttons so that you can walk up and get the throw. But that's what Daigo does here. And now Justin has throw on his mind. He doesn't want to get thrown again. And so he goes for a throw tech there. That's almost certainly what he did was he tried to break a throw. But instead of throwing, Daigo did DP FADC Ultra, which is going to kill. 
And of course, even if it was blocked, it would be safe because DP FADC was safe in the original version of Street Fighter 4. So a really, really powerful tool since he had the two meters available. Charging up the focus attacks, trying to bait out a button, but Justin lands the big sweep. And there, there's something you should know about Daigo. Daigo Umehara, they named a technique after him called the Ume Shoryu, which is essentially a psychic uppercut, a psychic Shoryuken. Daigo did not have two meters there. He just knew that the Dragon Punch was going to hit. And if he was wrong, if Justin blocked it, he would have eaten like 30, 40% combo. But he knew. And we're probably going to see a few more of those by the time this set is over. Nice little combo into Dragon Punch there. And now Daigo looking so aggressive. He's completely changed his playstyle around. He's no longer trying to poke with fireballs. He is running Justin down, making him run away. Look at how aggressively he's dashing forward. But Justin was ready with the rush punch in the super. Catches him moving forward. But this is still so dangerous from Justin because Daigo does have nearly four meters available. Now he has a full super. That's two FADCs available. And he goes for the throw. Justin, of course, blocking because he's scared of FADC uppercut. Daigo does F, uh, DP into super there, which is safe and does a lot of chip. And then a throw. So the score is now one to two. Daigo taking his second game in this final set here. I'm really amazed by the adaptation. You know, we talked about Justin early on. You know, he went from the rushdown strategy of his usual character, Rufus, as well as Abel, who is a rushdown grappler character. He went from that strategy into playing extremely defensively and turtly as Balrog caught Daigo off guard that way. But now Daigo has completely switched his play style as well. He became so aggressive instantly, and you can still see he's dashing forward a lot, but Justin can check those dashes with Balrog's big buttons. But the counterpoint to that is focus attack will punish Justin really badly if he sticks out a button, but here's another DPFADC Ultra. The Ryu Classic, of course. And then a nice little setup with the meaty fireball. Helps him get some extra frame advantage and push Justin into the corner. And there's an Ume Shoryu. He did it from so far away with no meter available and another one. EX Shoryuken goes right through whatever Justin was pressing. Daigo with two major gambles, but of course that's why it's the Ume Shoryu, because he knows it's going to hit. And then Justin using an armor breaker, that's Balrog's other armor breaker move, but look at Daigo here. He's just, he's just charging up focus attacks over and over. Justin fighting back a little bit with rush punches and he gets the long range jump over a fireball. Daigo continuing to just charge focus attacks. It's very interesting. Once again, he's changed his playstyle up completely. He jumps in with the two hit jumping medium punch, which opens Justin up. Justin with an empty jump throw. Smart way to beat focus attack is throw. Throwing him again in the corner. Walking back, trying to bait a button, but Daigo gets the DP punish on that close range rush punch. But there's another rush punch. Justin takes another round. So once again, if Daigo wins this round, the tournament is over and he wins because he already has two games. Justin needs to win this just to stay alive. And there he gets the EX uppercut, which you can combo off of, and he does. Continuing to pressure Daigo with these sweeps, but you got to watch out for focus attack. There's a jab linked into sweep. Nice combo from Daigo. Justin focus absorbing fireballs to build up a little bit of ultra meter. But Daigo sitting on a full super meter and a full ultra meter. That time Justin correctly blocks the double overhead with jumping medium punch twice in a row. But Daigo's pressuring him with these throws. But Justin, of course, he's scared to tech throw, which is smart. Let, let's back up again and, and look at this. Watch this sequence here. So we know that throw tech is dangerous when Ryu has EX bars and he has ultra meter. Throw tech is extremely dangerous because of DPFADC ultra. So Daigo knows that Justin is going to be scared to throw tech. So what does he do here? He throws, of course. If the opponent's not going to tech, just throw again. And he does it again. And then he thinks, surely this time he's going to tech the throw, right? Twi he's been thrown twice in a row. Surely he's going to tech it. So he goes for the EX Tatsumaki, which will beat throw. And you can combo into ultra off this in the corner. But Justin continuing to just say, listen, if you want to throw me, then throw me. Uh... You get way more damage from baiting the throw tech than you do from actually just landing the throw. So Justin just blocking everything out, 
so respectful of Ryu's options to beat throw text. And there he gets the EX upper again, going through a fireball, but not able to combo off it. Absorbing now Justin with a fully charged ultra meter, meaning his ultra will do extra damage. But Daigo as well, he's got full super and ultra again. He uses the helicopter Tatsumaki getting out of the corner. Now he's got a full screen space to work with, but look at how quickly he moves into a rushdown strategy, but it doesn't matter. Justin checks him with the three frame jab and makes the score two to two. The crowd is on their feet. One more game for either player will end the match. So let's see if Justin is able to mount this comeback against Daigo. Lands on a fireball there trying to neutral jump it. Daigo switching up the speed of his fireballs very effectively between fast and slow, making it hard to predict when to jump. Justin goes for a whiff punish there with the sweep, but barely misses it. Daigo switching back to this keep away fireball style, changing play styles on the fly so quickly. Lands the back throw, pushes Justin into the corner. This time Justin does tech a throw because he sees Daigo no ultra available, no FADC available. Not as big of a threat. Amazing anti-air there from Daigo. He knows he's been going for so many fireballs this round. Justin is a little bit more inclined to jump, but Daigo ahead of the game baits it, gets a DP FADC in to throw. That time, Justin not checking it with the three-frame jab. He uses the EX upper, which does whiff on crouching characters. Daigo texts the throw afterwards. Another nice anti-air from Justin. Daigo continuing to pressure with the crouching medium kick into fireball. Justin with a completely charged ultra meter, Daigo with only about half the meter charge, still enough to use it, but the damage is not maximized. And once again, Daigo with two bars of meter, three bars now, and an ultra, but he lands the crouching medium kick into DP. Daigo on tournament point here. One more round and Daigo takes the whole thing. This is Justin's last chance. Daigo also additionally, he almost has full super. Now he does have full super. That's two FADCs available or one super. Another brilliant whiff punish from Justin, but here we're going to see the super successfully combos into it. Goes for the setup with empty jump low. Justin blocks it, ticks him into throw. Justin not teching at that time. Low forward into fireball. Justin getting opened up repeatedly here. Does EX rush punch, pushing Daigo into the corner, but Daigo fighting out with these forward dashes. Spacing him out with fireballs. Justin scared to jump because of the possibility of anti-air. DPF ADC Ultra. There's an EX fireball. Justin in chip range. Justin jumps back. And he gets hit by the jumping roundhouse. And Daigo takes the tournament. And the crowd has... They, they have nothing but respect for this win. Obviously, the crowd really wanted Justin to win, representing America. The first time America could win Street Fighter 4 after not winning any EVOs for Street Fighter 3. But Daigo looking incredibly strong, proving that he deserves the title of number one in the world at Street Fighter. So I got to admit, guys, I, I remember watching this live. I, I was a freshman in college. I was watching on my laptop on Ustream.tv before Twitch.tv even existed. And I was heartbroken. I, I barely even knew who Justin Wong was. I had never been to a tournament. I had only started playing fighting games competitively when Street Fighter 4 came out. But I was heartbroken. I really wanted America to win. Uh, but, you know, looking back, it, this, it's just such a magical match. I mean, the fact that Justin, he proved himself by fighting back against Daigo, using the, the fundamentals, using the footsies, the, the reads, the blocking, the defense. Justin really showed why... He's considered one of the greatest of all time. But Daigo as well played incredibly well with all those exciting moments that you're used to seeing from Daigo where he can just pull things out at the very last minute and show you something that you've never seen anyone do in a fighting game before. So uh, I understand that <laughs> it's maybe a little bit discouraging that, you know, Justin maybe was kind of the underdog going into this. But Regardless, I think this match is so amazing. It still holds up. I still think about this all the time. And I go back and watch it regularly, which made this video a lot easier to make, is the fact that I just love watching this match. And I think it's so inspirational. When I watched this, this was the moment where I decided that I had to go to EVO. I had to see what this tournament is like in person. 
And, uh, you know, I've gone to seven Evos now <laughs> in, the, in the years since, so I guess you could say it really made a huge impact on me. And if you want to know what's crazy, an American never won Street Fighter 4 at Evo. The, the curse stayed alive all through the life of the game. Street Fighter V, an American has never won that at Evo either. And now the future of Evo is maybe a little bit in flux. We're not sure if and when there will be another Evo tournament where they could finally have a chance to break the curse and take first place. Both players have gone on to win various titles, both in EVO and in other tournaments as well, continuing to show that they remain two of the greatest players of all time, one of the greatest rivalries of all time, and in my opinion, the greatest EVO finals of all time. So let me know what you think, guys. Can you think of an EVO Grand Finals that was even better? I would love to hear it. Maybe in the future I can make a video about it. Uh, I wanted to give some special thanks here, special thanks to Justin Wong, for agreeing to be interviewed by me so I could use the footage in the video that was extremely kind of him to do and to uh, reminisce on such an important match to me. I really appreciate him for that. Thank you so much to the band The Consoles for allowing me to use their cover of Ryu's theme in this video. That's the music that's playing right now. And thank you guys so much for being so patient. I know it has been a really long time since I've done a video in this series and uh, I really appreciate you guys for being okay with that, for supporting me in what I've been doing, and I'll try to get the next one out way faster, I promise, guys. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.